Yes, you're looking at an area of Toledo called Seagate on the historic Maumee River. Corporate headquarters and hotels dominate the shoreline. But not far away, the great University of Toledo, and that's where we are now at Savage Hall for the championship round finals of the second jewel in bowling's triple crown. The PBA National Championship. Let's meet our five finalists. Our fifth seed is after his first PBA title from Bel Air, Maryland, Tim Crisp. His opponent in match one is a six-time champion from Beaumont, Texas, Mark Williams. Match two features a three-time title and former U.S. Open winner, bowling out of Andover, Kansas, Justin Romick. Our second seed is a delightful pro with five titles from Lake Havasu City, Arizona, Butch Soper. And our tournament leader averaged a PBA record 238 for his 56 games. Number one in all departments, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. What a field bow and a lot of money at stake. You're right, Chris. 56 games, seven days, 30,000 on top, a three-year exemption. Our first match features untested Tim Kress against a guy who's used to winning the big ones, Mark Williams. An hour and a half from now, we'll have a new national champion. We're ready to go. And the handshake now is last week. Mark Williams, winner, Windsor Locks, Connecticut, was the fourth seed. He finished third. Tim Kress, the best this year, he finished seventh in the Reno Open. It's only his second television appearance, his first of 96. Here's his first shot. <laughs> Looking good on the beautiful Brunswick. Temporary lane, synthetic, installed here at Savage Hall, a multi-purpose arena, just a great facility. And Mark Williams, Mark Williams ties it up. He with the glistening bowling shoes today. Boy, they're spectacular, Nelson. You're right, Chris, and he made a little change to accommodate the synthetic approaches. They bowled on wood lanes over at Ducat's Imperial Lanes. 56 games, seven days as Mark's waiting for a ball return. A little glitch here in the equipment. Mm -hmm. Would those shoes or shoes like that help my game bow? <laughs> <laughs> you can only scare the pins down with those, partner. <laughs> okay. Well, as we indicated, uh, these have been installed here in the Savage Hall. Savage Hall, incidentally, is named for a John Savage, very philanthropic-minded uh, uh, deceased member of the Toledo community. It's a great honor, and he was a great man. So now the applause for the ball return. <laughs> so on the left lane, Mark Williams. Oh, a high hit bow and the result. Well, Chris, you know it's been eight years since this man has won a PBA tournament, and what he has to do right now is just take two of the pins. I mean, he really can't make it. Go over for the 6-10 and maybe slide one over, bounce it out. But one of the reasons he has not won in eight years, as good as he is, he's had one big mistake every game in a championship round. Here's a man that's won two tournament of champions, two majors. And this is a major, second in the uh, Triple Crown. Tim Chris with a strikeout, shooting in the second frame. All but the 10 pin. Well, the strength of Tim Chris's game is really in his discipline. He's almost a self-taught, textbook type player. Sets up normal, watch, he'll have a normal push away. He'll be out straight, feet straight across, and watch his follow through as he comes to the line. Good position up here, and then straight on through the foul line. And all that Chris needs to do is get to the next level. Chris uh, Schenkel is uh, basically, I think, get a little confidence and secondly, maybe add a little muscle to his game as a lot of the pros have uh, turned to the barbells lately to handle today's synthetic lane conditions. You were the first to do that, Nelson. Well, I might have been, but there's been a lot of followers who are very strong out here. Well, you've always been a good leader. <laughs> 
All right, second frame. Tim Chris leads by 14 pins up on the left. Another 10 pin. From time to time today, you're going to hear a terrific country western band called Bob Wurst and Buckeye. Uh, they'll be playing in and out of commercials and breaks and so forth. Uh, give, tune your ear to them because they're pretty good. The half 10 by Chris right there just doesn't quite get up solid in the pocket. That's two in a row like that. And that's just kind of lack of experience confidence. Just a little tentative. Okay. Continuing to mark and a perspiration wipe. Well, he got through the tough three first frames. Come on, Mark. Mark now getting some um, support from the crowd. Just didn't come up. Mark Williams with the big hook starts the extreme left side of the lane, crosses over the center, drifts out to about the seventh board, and just doesn't get enough finish on that. Shiny reactive resin bowling ball leaves the two pin. Okay. The winner of this first match in the PBA National Championship will meet Justin Romick. And then we move ahead to uh, Butch Soper, who normally is our statistician, but today we have the great Tom Baker, upstate New York um, hero. So he's filling in great for Butch Hull Bowl. I'll tell you what, the crowd jumps back. Mark Williams decided to go with a straight shot, very much like Walter Ray Williams Jr. He has almost no chance of making this. All he can do is try to bounce this 10 pin out and into the eight. It's almost like a 7-10 split. Just not enough power, it leaves the 8-10, unusual. Four frames, two opens. Yes, we're on the campus of the University of Toledo. 25,000 students. And at its heart is the clock tower. Now, there's a brand new motor oil made to handle the stresses on your hard-working engine. 4x4 from Quaker State. Off-road driving. Extreme temperatures. Especially towing and hauling. They all make your light truck or... They often called the glass capital of the world. Toledo. The University of Toledo. One of their proud institutions. Here at Savage Hall. Temporary Brunswick Lanes. We have a glitch in um, a... Sounds like a, um, a monitor of the bass guitar. <laughs> So Tim Chris wisely stepped off the approach. He's ready to go now. Fourth frame, a spare up. All right, here's the youngest man ever to win the PBA National Championship. Current player of the year from Indiana, Mike Albee. Oh, thanks, Chris. You know, the major championships are always big. Any tournament gives you confidence. When you win the PBA National, one of the three Triple Crown events, it gives you more confidence because all the players that bowl in the tournament are PBA members. There are no gibbies. No, uh, there's no amateurs, no free entries in the tournament, just PBA members. No gibbies in this tournament at all. Chris, I agree with Mike. This is the toughest one to win. Good shot by Tim, and Mike was 19. Today, he's proud to say he's 36. And uh, won a title two weeks ago, his 24th in Baltimore, defeating Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Now let's see how Mark Williams gets going. He is the experienced player out here, and he's in trouble. Going with a straight shot. All right, leaving a 3-6 on the right lane. Well, he's doing something a little unfamiliar for Mark Williams. He's always had that big serpentine teen type hook, Chris, and he has found a lane condition out here that he wants to go straight. Now, look at this angle. He wants it to go straight, but he still has that little flip in there, and mm -hmm. what he needs to do is a little more ball speed to hold it online. If you watch a guy like Walter Ray, as we wait for the three pin to be set up, Chris, the machine knocked it over. As the replay showed, we had the three six. They're going to respot the three pin along with the six. If a machine aids a pinfall, it has to be respotted. So that's what we're waiting for here. You'll see, there it is. Yeah. 
So a very slow game here and twice as slow for Mark Williams as he trails by 36 pins. This is the fifth frame and he got a bad spot on this three pin here. He can chop this. Fortunately, he didn't. Next Saturday, ABC Sports rolls through the Great Lakes to Michigan. Our next stop on the Professional Bowlers Tour is the Greater Detroit Open Arena Bowling. That's next Saturday at 3 Eastern and Pacific here on ABC Sports. his very first strike and it came in the sixth frame now with a double up shooting in the sixth frame he can take a 46 pin lead This is uh, fiance Sherry, legal secretary in Baltimore. Make it his wife. Put that wedding band on, Chris. We did. Okay. <laughs> Going for four in a row, seventh frame. Today, the Belmont Stakes on ABC. We asked today's bowlers who they like. My pick is Cavanier. Uh, one thing, being out on tour for four years, I've learned that uh, the favorites normally figure out a way to win. This is a good weekend to steal things. Hopefully, I'm stealing this tournament, picking Prince of Thieves to win the Belmont. My pick for the Belmont is going to be Editor's Note. I have no reason but bet the house on it because he's going to win. The winner of the Belmont, skip away. Came close in the Kentucky Derby, let me down a little bit, but the Belmont's longer. I think skip away will win in that last furlong or two. My pick for the Belmont's Kevin here, because there's a favorite. Challenge, it's the Belmont Stakes Live, next on Wide World. Part of the uh, University of Toledo Rocket Cheerleaders. And Bo, uh, you were telling me that they're off to the Olympics in Atlanta. They're off the Olympics in Atlanta, and they're ranked 10th in the nation as a cheerleading squad. They're very entertaining before, after, and uh, obviously during the show. And the mascot is the Rocket. He is a Rocket. And here's a guy who has to get a little Rocket in his bowling ball. He's trailing <laughs> by 46 pins. Mark Williams has been attentive, too slow. He has to go to the whip. Mike Albee did in 1979 and 1985, winning the PBA. Mike? Thanks, Chris. I have Justin Romick, the third place bowler with me. And Justin, two 300 games this week at Imperial. Have you been able to find the line to carry out here to shoot 300? Well, I think it's going to be a little tougher than what it was during the week. As you can see the lanes, there's two things happening. It's real hot in here right now, and the lanes are changing real fast. And if you're not on top of it, you're going to leave some splits and make some bad shots. So I think the key today is just going to be trying to stay out of trouble because I don't think it's going to take as much to win the matches today as it has been on previous arena shows. He'll get his four practice balls before he starts, and he'll get them figured out. Okay, guys, Mark Williams. <laughs> Had he gotten the four pin, he could have cut the lead to 26. Mark Williams, who, as we indicated, finished um, last week third in Connecticut. Quickly downs that long pin the four. All right, Chris, 47 pins ahead up in the eighth frame. If he strikes, it'll be 57, almost an insurmountable lead. Wow. Tonight on ABC, there's more kids and animals than you can shake a stick at in Second Noah. At 8, 7 Central. Then, Melissa Joan Hart from Clarissa Explains It All stars in the comedy that'll make you feel your family and your vacation aren't so bad after all. Family reunion, a relative nightmare tonight 
on ABC. Untested Tim Chris has strung together five in a row, can make it six, has a potential 269 game. Yeah. Well, the last two winners of the PBA National Championship won their first PBA title in this event. Last year, Scott Alexander, Bo. Yes, he came all the way through the field. Oh, nice. Mark Williams a little late. Yep. Mark had the right idea. He was a little confused. And, you know, every lane condition favors somebody. Let's take a look at how Mark attacked the lanes. And this is not really going to be the good way today. He's going to be in here, 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 playing the big hook. And you want it almost straight down and in. So you got to get the results. Now we'll take a look maybe later on at Tim Chris or even Butch Soper, who's going down and in, as Justin Romick said. The big hook will not work consistently today. There's your winner of the first match, Tim Chris. Settle for uh, fifth place in this year's PBA National Championship. The, he was he was tournament chairman for the PBA for four years. Been very much involved with the PBA. Six titles, 16-year member. Good guy. And Tim Chris now will get to know even better. For Mark, it's a 179. Chris, very deliberate, even in victory here. Just stay tuned in. He's known as a stroker out here. We're going to have contrasting styles coming up in match two, Chris. We're going to have the stroke smooth of Tim Chris, and we're going to have the muscle power of Justin Romick. Romick, a weightlifter, great athlete, uses tremendous speed, lift, and wrist action where Chris is more methodical, keeps it in play. He did not make a mistake in this match. Look at his score. Strike, 10 pin, 10 pin, and then strung together seven in a row. Make it eight. Now he's getting loose, getting that uh, very relaxed smile on his face. Bel Air, Maryland. Of course, we were in the Maryland area two weeks ago when Mike Albee won. Maryland turns out some very, very fine professional bowlers. We've always had some good tournaments mm -hmm. there, sometimes in Baltimore, sometimes in Adelphi. All right. A 268 is this ABC Sports presentation of the professional bowler show will continue after these messages and word from our ABC stations. <laughs> The Professional Bowlers Tour on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Mylanta, the antacid doctors recommend most. My doctor said Mylanta. Fruit of the Loom, maker of really, really comfortable clothes. And Kellogg's, with good taste, nutrition, and value, the best you each morning from Kellogg's. And there you have the uh, results of their very first match. Tim Chris, a rookie, defeating Mark Williams. 268 to 179. I'm Chris Schenkel and with Nelson Burton Jr. Chris, it's very obvious the first game, if you throw too much hook, you're going to be in trouble. I'm sure Justin Romek looked at that. Tim Chris has got the edge. And, uh, of course, we had Mike Albee on a little bit earlier mm -hmm. with one of his great rewards. And uh, let's take a look at that. Last year, the IOF Independent Order of Foresters um, Player of the Year and, and the man on the right is... Kevin Shippey, uh, Associate Executive Director of the PBA, and with the award goes a $10,000 check to uh, Mike. Chris, and along with uh, Mike Albee as the spokesperson, the PBA and the IOF donated $1.1 million to mm -hmm. the Miracle Children, Children's Miracle Network. Now, Tim Chris off to a great start with 268 the first game, a tough opponent again in Justin Romuck. Fourth by the PBA. His opponent in this match ranked 25th, Justin Romick, Andover, Kansas. He's 5'9, 165 pounds, 29 years old, three titles. And he struggled on this lane in his practice balls, Chris. He wasn't even close. Let's see what happens. He has won five of the last seven matches on TV. Well, he has 
has a type of style, Chris, and confidence. He came through Wichita State in the college program. He was ranked in the top three all four of his years in college. And he won the PB, uh, the U.S. Open a few years mm -hmm. back. And he actually won his first tournament, defeating Bob Benoit and I with, uh, in a doubles match. Uh, Dick Weber is his partner, and he never missed striking. As you look at his grip, he uses that little like a power grip on his index finger to get a better grip of the ball. And he actually keys off of that, wants the center of the weight of the ball in the center of his index finger. Good idea. This United States Open champion, Justin Romick, left the seven pin on the left lane, the beginning here of our second match for the PBA National Championship. Fair shot, Chris. He may have to go to that on his strike ball. It's imperative that you sit, go with the boards today. It's Tim Chris's natural shot. It's Butch Soper's natural shot. And everything seems natural for our tournament leader, Walter Ray Williams Jr. So let's see what happens and unfolds in this match. It's early yet. Going up high, leaving the 4 6 7 on the right lane. Tim Chris just left of his target. He almost hit the second arrow, and if you noticed in the first game, he was right around that first arrow. You missed three or four boards left of target. You're going to pay a penalty. He'll just shoot for the 4-7, settle for nine out, try to regroup and start the third frame. We've just joined us, Tim Chris, at whom you're looking, shot a 268 to do eliminate Mark Williams, who shot a 179. On the campus, University of Toledo, Savage Hall, used to be called Centennial Hall, and Coach Bobby Nichols and his Rockets won many great basketball games here, and Toledo has a great basketball and football heritage. Mid-America Conference. Four pin. Okay, we see the lanes changing a little bit. The players get an hour's practice before we go on the telecast. We've been on the air for about a half hour now. The lanes are breaking a little bit. What Tim Chris has to do is either move slightly to the left with his feet or throw the ball a little bit harder. You see him taking the, an angle like this straight across. This is good spare angle for the four pin. Okay. It's a bowling town. Lots of leagues, lots of bowling establishments, and uh, you can tell the way the cloud applauds that uh, they know what's happening down there on the approaches. You bet, Chris. Very knowledgeable. Always have been. Great turnout for every tournament here. Savage Hall. Justin Romick fiddling with his tape, fiddling with his tape, trying to get the right feel. Here's a guy who is a four-sport athlete in high school, basketball, football, track, and obviously bowling, has to get the right feel. And he's tightening up that thumb hole, and that's very important to keep the ball from hooking too much. He doesn't want to lay the ball short and have it hook early. If you notice the last frame, he got the big loft out over the foul line. That's the key to straightening it out. He can cut Tim Chris's lead to just two pins with a strike here in the fourth. Here in the um, temporary setting for these lanes, you can hear the uh, the machines working back there. Bone, and hear the ball hit the deck. Well, we haven't hit them hit. Heard it hit the pins very hard yet today. Woo! Oh. Woo! That's right. Bob Worst, the Buckeye, performing here at Savage Hall. Toledo is known as the gateway to exploration, invention, transportation, and industry. Appropriately, this monument's name, you'll see in a moment, in Greek translates to Seagate. All kinds of 
musical affairs and home to the Rockets University of Toledo basketball team. Intramural activities here. There are five complete basketball courts in this facility, and I have emceed several NBA games right here where we're sitting and talking. Tim Chris, who was trailing by 12, makes it 13 with that soft 10. He left two of those in the first game, however, came back with eight strikes in a row after leaving the 10 pin. A little bit confused on this right-hand lane. He struck on the left, went high for a 4-6 split in the second frame. He has come back with a 10 pin. I don't think Romick's gonna put a lot of pressure on him. Just keep his game together. Okay, here again, Mike Alden. I have nothing, Mark Williams. Mark, uh, big four, eight, ten, two extremes. Uh, you're trying to make some moves out there. Could you explain to us what you're trying to do? Well, the lanes are just a little tighter here, a little slicker. I uh, could use a ball with a little sanded surface and move in and hook the lane. Lane's got a little critical. The guys are struggling this game. I probably should have played them a little bit straighter and just uh, gone with something that felt a little more comfortable. Good job this week, Mark. Thanks, Mark. And just to clear that up, uh, Mark Williams cannot sand his bowling ball after he starts competition. That's the reason he didn't do it. Nice strike by Tim Chris. You mean, Bo, before he started competition today or at the beginning of the tournament? The beginning of today's match. Okay. You can change. You are allowed All eight right. bowling balls in the PBA Tour in the building. Good. You can use any one of the eight, but you cannot alter the surface of those balls once competition begins. Okay. Now, Romick up here in the fifth frame, trails by 13. Or leads by 13. <laughs> Once again, uh, Mike Alby with a good friend of ours. Butch Soper, been out here 24 years. You got a chance to another major championship. You just told me you're O forever against Walter Ray. You going to be able to get to him? <laughs> you know, I tell you, lately I, in the finals, I've been, I'm in the top 24. I beat him every time. And when it comes to the TV show, I'm at least over 3, 0 for 4. I overheard him last night say, I always beat Butch on television. Well, bring him on. I'm ready. Don't forget that first match, Butch. <laughs> I know. I get one one first. I know. The likable Butch Soper. He'll be tough. <laughs> he beat, uh, in match play, he defeated Walter Wright twice. There's the fiance. Yes, yes. Christy Butcher. And she is in the finance department, listen to this, Bo, of Cessna Aviation in Wichita. Wow. So when you buy your next airplane, see Christy. Chris, I just rent them now. I can't afford to buy them. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right, Tim Chris can come back. Played Tim. once again by the 10 pin partner. He has a wireless uh, transmitter microphone on, and I'm anxious for him to say something. Does a lot of body language, though. You know what? One more 10 pin, he'll say something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if you want to hear it. Might be blue. <laughs> Spare coming in the sixth frame of the second game. Here's a man who three weeks ago when we were in Baltimore uh, had an article in the newspaper about quitting bowling. He's given it a good try. He's just about broken even every year. Makes between thirty and forty thousand. It takes about twenty-five to make a living out mm -hmm. here and just break even. So this could be a very pivotal tournament for him if he could win the national championship. of our second match between Tim Chris and Justin Romick. Well, today all the action uh, is at Savage Hall <laughs> during the school year at Toledo Student Union yeah, really. is the activity center. Facilities galore at the U of T. Oregon, part of the, uh, the group headed by Bob Worsh and the Buckeyes. They're entertaining here uh, during the break in action and Justin Romick now is up. He leads by 23, double working, seventh frame. Come on now, come on. 
solid 10. But D Justin's doing the right thing. He's muscling that ball down here. Here's a guy who bench presses close to 300 pounds, stays in shape here on the tour, and he's using that upper arm strength and upper shoulder strength to get the ball down the lane. We saw Mark Williams trying to play the big hook, and he just struggled. That's because there's a lot of oil in the middle and very dry outside. Justin, one of the 12 300 shooters this week. At Imperial Lanes, uh, the prelude to the finals being played here. Thus far this year, there have been 113 perfect games in 18 tournaments. And that 300 came at an opportune time, Chris, in the 55th game. We bowled 56 games for the national championship. Mm -hmm. He bowled 300 in the 55th game to jump from 10th up into a position to make the telecast. As his fiance looks on, he leads by 22 eighth frame second match. Bucket leading to five. We're just getting an inconsistent release by Romick. We saw him loft the ball well out on the right hand lane, leave a solid 10. He was happy with that shot there. He loses the ball on the bottom of the swing and gets a great break as he leaves the very simple five pin. He'll make the spare and continue to lead in the match by 21. Soper, winner of the semifinal game. To go on, meet our number one in everything, Walter Ray Williams Jr. for the PBA National Championship. Tim Chris does not have the luxury of not striking right here. If he doesn't strike here, his back is up against the wall. Eighth frame. Boy, he makes his best shot of the match. You see a longer follow-through, a very determined release. Nice and smooth, stayed within his game. With one more strike, ninth frame, he can cut the lead of former U.S. Open champion Justin Romix down to just one pin. Chris had the good feel and went with his best shot, kind of roped it right into the pocket. And that's why I say the straight shooters have a slight advantage. They can make a little pull mistake and still get a good result. Now it's up to Romick to answer the challenge brought forth by Tim Chris. He only leads by one pin. This is his ninth frame. The four. Well, Christopher, we have not had a tie match all year. We started in March, here it is June, and we have a potential tie as these players will be all even going into the 10th frame. It's our 12th tournament with two more to go. Detroit next week, and then Wichita. The kingpin in Wichita. Ah, yeah. So it's a spare in the night's foundation frame for Romick. We are even, as Bo has indicated. If indeed they tie, they will bowl a ninth and tenth frame, similar to the ninth and tenth frame, roll off until somebody wins. If they tie there, they do it again. Here we go. Possible 217 for Romuck. He cannot shut out Chris because Tim Chris has a strike working. Savage Hall, so occasionally you'll hear a train. Well, I'll tell you what, the pins are saying get the n engine number of that ball that went through That's those pins right. on that one right there. He just threw his best shot, partner. Uh -huh. And he is all even. His fiancee. Christy with a K. R I S T I Butcher. She knows the score. He can take a 10 pin lead if he doubles here. No 
problem seeing how he was ranked among the top players in college and how he won a U.S. Open. When he needed it the most, he threw his two best shots. You notice the, the difference in the loft and lift out over the foul line compared to that poor shot he threw in the eighth frame. Now 217 would make Tim Chris strike twice. I can only just say, Chris, that was real, real good. Win yeah. or lose, he did what he had to do. Now he has forced Tim Chris to strike twice. Chris must strike on the next two balls. Pepper only a second television appearance. Eight regional titles. Romick's the winner. Nice job, uh, Tim Chris. Nice for it. This week's winning never gets old. Tip of the week features Paula Carter, who puts you on the spot. Never gets old bowling tip. Brought to you by Comfort Inns and Suites. Today we're going to show you how you can improve your bowling game through spot bowling. And with me is former U.S. Open women's champion, Paula Carter. And Paula knows the benefits of practice drills in the sport of bowling. Paula, what do you have here? Well, Bo, we have the 7 and the 10 pins set up. We have a Venetian blind out there so that we can't see the pins because they're 60 feet away and we don't want to look at them anyway. We want to look at the target, and that's 15 feet away. Great idea. Let's take a shot at it. You shoot the 7 pin. That's a little bit tougher for the left-hander. I'll shoot the 10 pin. We'll close the Venetian blinds so we can concentrate on our target, and let's have a go at it. Bingo, pretty good. Take a tip from Paula Carter, spot bowl and you'll improve your game. And remember, winning never gets old. This ABC Professional Bowlers Tour winning never gets old bowling tip has been brought to you by Comfort Inns and Suites. Chris winning the first 268 to 179 over Mark Williams. Chris then losing to Justin Romick, 217 to 205. The PBA, two stalwarts in the office, Al on the right and his wife Shirley on the left. Al is retiring after 26 years. Have a peaceful, happy retirement, Al. Great couple there, Chris. Long week here, 56 games as the players Started with a field of 205, 54 places were paid. Congratulations to Ken Yakubowski, who finished 51st for 1,040. And here's some of our other top 24. Mike Miller, Mike Edwards, the 300-man Johnson. And Leroy Johnson said he had just a blast. He's a regional player. Our statistician, Tom Baker. There's some familiar names, Weber, Monicelli, Traber. Ernie Schlegel, the Masters champion, the Big D. Rock and Ryan. Steve Wilson won our Quaker State and Billy Oaks round out the top 24, Chris, in some upcoming tournaments. Okay, the Greater Detroit Open, it's Arena Bowling in Allen Park, Michigan, June 15th. And of course, two weeks from today, our last stop in Wichita, it is the King Pen Classic, about a motion picture comedy featuring Woody Harrelson, Bill Murray, Randy Quaid, and I played myself in it. Hey, Chris, that was, a, that was easy. Good looking people in that tournament. I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, now the action toughens up. Semifinal match, PBA National Championship. Justin Roma, he's got one major. U.S. Open under his belt going against the very experienced veteran Butch Soper. appearance on television he looks to uh, be a big star down the road he has the personal habits and the game Chris and it takes mm -hmm. both to, to maintain stardom out here for a decade and that's what you need here's a guy who's been out here for almost three decades just a great natural ability to bowl all but the five pin 
as we, we indicated, this is the Butch Soper we talk about from week to week. Well, Chris, he takes the full approach, all 17 feet. He opens his hand on a backswing, and this is what a lot of players need to do to learn to throw the ball straight, is keep that thumb outside of 12 o'clock, around a 1 o'clock. A lot of players try to keep the ball inside of 12 o'clock. Well, the pins never know what time it is when you get the thumb down that low. And Butch knows about not taking a lot of time. He is one of the, the quick starters and, and strokers on the tour. Talk about a quick start. He started the tournament, okay? Game one, 300. Next game, 10 in a row, 22 strikes in a row. The all-time record of strikes in a row in the PBA Tour, Norm Duke. Now, you watch Butch Soper. Everything is straight. I don't have to draw any boxes or anything. Butch Soper is just straight. Ooh. And that's where the pins went straight back. They dance off the deck. Butch Soper, former surfer, California kid. The only real penalty of having to keep up your ball speed is you drive the pins up in the air and you leave the ring in 10. If you have a little softer ball speed, the six pin stays lower, has a better chance of taking out the 10. However, today's conditions, if you throw slow, you can't keep it in the pocket. So it's a fine balance between speed and power. Time to time, Norm Salmon, our director, shows you other professional bowlers. Since nearby Detroit is the scene of battle, uh, many of them have stayed over just to watch this PBA National Championship. Well, most of them want to little, learn a little bit, Chris, and obviously they're just mm -hmm. heading about 60 miles north next sure. week. It will be a Taylor Lanes for the qualifying. Romick's still fiddling around, just can't get the right feel. The key is, will he loft the ball out over the line? If he lays it short, he's in trouble. I hit the result a six pin on the left lane. Well, here, here's a good replay. Watch the ball just goes barely over the foul line about six or eight inches. When his best shots, as we saw him finish out the last game, is when he lofted that ball a la Mark Roth about four or five feet over the line. That delays the hook, and he can simulate the straight shot that works better today. Right. Right. Be sure and remind you, of course, uh, Steve Wilson. Sherry's husband, who is here also today. Won the Quaker State earlier this mm -hmm. year. Now Soaps, with an early double, can take a 11-pin lead. Made a little shoe change, who's having trouble sticking at the foul line. But the Wild Stallion just runs and lets her go. Mike Havasu. Watching Butch today, his wife Dawn and son Jondon. And Butch's other uh, children, Shane and Sandra, cheering him on. Doesn't take much bowling calculus, Chris, that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That's how Butch has got to the five pin there. Came off the edge board, got the board 17. That's the rip spot, and just demolished the rack. Is in the lead. We'll be back. Mark the despair in the fourth frame. Still uh, trailing by 26, but the strike was important. He opened with a strike, then three spares, and now Butch Soper, a spare, and three bagger working for him now, shooting in the fifth frame. Best match play record, 18 and 6. A four. Interesting part about Butch's grip is he just used one finger gripper in his ring finger. As you see him release this ball here, goes a little bit high, doesn't trip the four pin. Butch always keeps the ball in play. I mean, he doesn't throw the big hook, so you don't expect any wild shots out of him. Uh, 
There's the pitch, and here again, Mike Alvey. Thanks, Chris. Tim, you made some great shots, two, three in a row to get back in the match. You leave it a light two pin. Did you throw it good? Did you like it? Uh, well, I was kind of losing the right lane, Mike, and uh, I was just basically trying to force it in the pocket, and I gave it a little too much room and didn't really catch enough of it, so I kind of knew it when I left it off my hand. So. <laughs> Put himself into play this week. Did a great job. An honest answer to an unfavorable situation. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Tim. Good week. Ten pen for Butch on the left lane. Good show. Soper, our statistician for years, replaced Palmer Falgren, my good friend Chris, mm -hmm. who has just been named our United States Olympic coach, uh, succeeding Fred Borden, who did a stellar job over the years. And Palmer, I'm sure, will resurrect our United States team back up to number one where they should be. And he will shake up Olympic Village. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> Justin needs to get a strike here to make a match of it. Trails by 26 frames, strike up. That's a double cutting the lead now to Tim Pins. Tomorrow at 1 Eastern, noon Central and Pacific on ABC, IndyCar points leader Jimmy Vassey is primed for a battle at the ITT Automotive Detroit Grand Prix. Then the United States national soccer team squares off against Ireland in U.S. Cup 96. That's all tomorrow here on ABC Sports. Strike. Jimmy Vassar, the point leader. Strike here. It's an even match through seven frames. Boy, the subtle difference between success and failure at this level is just having the right shot. You have to accommodate the lane. You really can't beat it. Justin Romek, who has a little bit more natural power than Butch Soper, pays a slight penalty for every little mistake. There he leaves the four pin. Soper is going to lead by 11. University of Toledo, meanwhile, a revitalized downtown Toledo, offers a view of the Maumee River, even to art forms. Not bad. Their football team, Chris, undefeated oh. last year. Oh, it's a terrific in the Mid-America Conference. They've always been just terrific. Division I team, undefeated last year, ranked 24th in the nation. Here goes Soper, leads by 11th, 11th, 7th frame. Oh, broke up the split, still left to 6'10". Wow, the first really good break for anybody today. Soper has the big tonk just standing there looking at his face. 4, 6, 7, 10, he gets out with a 6'10". If he converts his spare, you're talking about an 18-pin flip-flop. Okay, uh, current president and past president of the PBA, Walter Ray Williams and Mike Albee. Thanks, Chris. Well, Butch said he was old forever against you and looking forward to taking you on for the PBA National Championship. Is that who you want to go against, Walter? Um, I really don't care who I bowl against. Uh, I think I've got a little advantage out there, linked a bit more oil, but I'm going to give a little extra hit to get that ball to hook the way it was during the week. Walter's having a great year. I don't think anybody will stop him. Strike coming in the eighth frame following the spare for Butch Soper. Getting late here in the semifinal game. Earned the right to meet Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Interesting, Butch Soper, about a one to two degree angle of attack to the pins. You're talking Justin Roman, about three, Romick, about three or four degree angle of attack. And Mark Williams, who struggled, had about a six degree angle of attack. That's the best angle of attack, but you couldn't control the lane surface. So the happy blend is right here in Romick. Leaving a two. Well, each year we come to Toledo for these telecasts. We always uh, wonder how they're doing, the boys at the Hamway Bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
every day, they, every week, as you see Justin Romick leave a two pin, every week they have a little pool and draw a name out of the hat. And uh, I don't know who has Walter Ray, but uh, they got to be looking forward to it today. Is, uh, your good friend Frank Yahuli is probably the monitor of all that action. Right. Next Saturday at 1 Eastern and Pacific, the USA women's basketball team travels to the Windy City to take on the women of Russia. It's a crucial test for the undefeated Americans next Saturday here on ABC Sports. Frank Yahuli of longtime star here in the Toledo area as a sportscaster, former Notre Dame All-American. You can't have a better friend than Frank Yohuli. Great talent. And here's another great talent on the approach. Ninth frame, semifinal game, trails by 10. It's 10 on the left lane. Justin leaves the half 10. This isn't the solid 10. And what's the difference is, is watch the six pin, the second pin on the right-hand part of your screen. See, it just kind of lies down in the channel. If it pops over the top, that's the ring and 10. If it just sits there, it's just not solid enough in the pocket. Lots of power and speed. Roman cross lane for the 10 pin as a University of Toledo Rockets. Mascot and cheerleaders are hanging right in there with us today. Next week, Allen Park Civic Arena for the Greater Detroit Open. Butch Soper is going to get a double dip at Justin Romick. And what I mean by that, he can lock him out with a double and a mark here or get a mark and throw three strikes in the tenth. Let's see what happens in the ninth. That's the ring in ten. Yep. Well, we saw the last match go to the very last ball. This match is going the same direction. Here's Butch. He knows he's throwing it well. He's going to be disappointed when he sees the result. There you go. Great camera angle. Six pin right around the belly of the 10. You know, a big difference. Of course, the major championship is what they're shooting for, but in the money department, you lose in this game, you get 8,000. But if you win, you have a chance for 30,000 or 16,000. Plus, in a major, yes. it's only next year. Regular tournament, there's next week. So you only have one opportunity a year to win this. Now, Soper up in the 10th with a strike and a spare, he would win. 20 fill locks up the match. EDS needs a spare. Which Soper always known for his clutch bowling. He was always very good in tough matches. He's won some tournaments with some of the lowest scores. He won in Baltimore over George Pappas, 172-168. Mm -hmm. He beat Gary Skidmore, 189 to 184. He likes low scoring matches. Good in the clutch. All he needs is a strike or spare to lock this one up. Guarantees a tie. He's won 34,670 thus far this year. Last year, 60,985. And in his career, 713,000. Look at this reaction. Well, he knows he's temporarily dodged the bullet. A spare by Butch Soper, and there's nothing Romick can do. 216 would be Soper's score with a spare. He carefully sets himself. Romick with three strikes would only have 250. Soper wins. This ABC Sports presentation, the Professional Bowling Tour, will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. As you can see, we're ready for the PBA National Championship Final between Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Butch Soper. Two Californians going head to head now for the top prize and a lot of money. Well, Chris, for a lot of money, I'd never say Butch Soper is the underdog, but I have to say it right here. The veteran, he's been there before, 46 years old, going against the hottest bowler and one of the best, proving himself one of the best of all times, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. The downside for Walter has never won a Triple Crown event. Boy, he's cranking it today. Walter Ray, this is his sixth appearance in 1996. He has three victories in two seconds. 
and um, he's earned $133,530. All right, Butcher matches it. Won his first title in 1978. And as indicated before in match play, Butch won two against Walter Ray. 32 games of qualifying. Butch was the early leader. Walter caught him. Then Butch had a quick jump as he started match play with another 300 game. He had two this week. Walter Ray caught him down the stretch. 56 games. But now there's only nine frames left. And you know what? Those pins don't know whose name is on that bowling ball. They just know who throws it in the pocket. And when they met before, was that Imperial Lanes? Not here. Oh, a saw ball for Butch. Just destroys the five. Got this crowd into it, partner. They really have. They've, they've come to enjoy the action, and I hope our viewers have too. Thank you very much. What happened there? Well, what happened? Watch the head pin. It's got, it goes. It's bye-bye. It's back in there. Ticks the back uh, of a... Don't they call that clipping or uh, what is that? Horseshoes. <laughs> <laughs> Walter's one of his best friends from Missouri is here, though. Number one horseshoe champion watching his good buddy. Remember two weeks ago, Walter Ray and Mike Albee battled and now here's Walter Ray again. Here's the PBA rankings, a composite of 50 tournaments based on average caches in major tournaments such as the PBA National Championship are weighted a little more. Walter Ray Williams Jr. has been the number one man for the past 14 tournaments. He succeeded Norm Duke. However, right now they're bowling for one big game against Butch Soper. Butch Soper with three in a row. Walter Ray, three in a row. Look how loose Walter Ray is looking off at uh, some of the PBA officials and smiling. Do not, Walter Ray, take Butch Soper for granted. This is a moxie veteran who knows how to win. And he's not going to get many more opportunities than he knows it. Take that. The California Surfer. This is class. Two great bowlers going head to head. Now this match, all even Walter Ray three in a row. Book Soper four. Uh, four, seven. Walter did not get out of that thumb hole very clean. Watch this, so just a little hang shot. It bounces out of the lane. Boom, boom. See that extra bounce? Drifts high, 4-7. Walter, the best spare shooter on the tour. One reason, good angles and easy spares. No, no, no. That's it. What did he do? Oh, goodness, goodness. A rare error of that type for the number one player in the world. He's holding his back, Chris. Did he stick on the approach or what happened? Only he knows. We'd have to ask him. He just completely whiffs it. I'll tell you what, Butch Soper jumped right up out of his seat and over into the other seat. What a tremendous mistake by Walter Ray. Let's see if he can recover. Great champion. There's uh, Paige Pennington, Walter Ray's wife. Great supporter. Helps him tremendous amount. And they're traveling. Butch Soper has bowled a lot of action. That's match game. Put up your own money back in his old day. He knows this is a frame where you jump on the best player in the world. Cut it loose. Give it your number one, Butch. Ooh. Leads the 2 4 5. Too anxious. Throws it right through the break. There you go. Get it over in the 2 4 5 zone. Straight back. Spare here, Butch would lead by 21 through five frames. Uh, the pressure getting to the 
face, guys. No doubt, Chris. I don't think I've ever seen Butch miss that far left of his target. He was aiming at the third arrow and hit almost the fourth arrow. Mike, what a situation. Yeah. Yeah, it's very tough. Uh, let's look out there. Justin, you did a great job all week, but you just didn't look as confident as I've seen you look before. Something wrong out there? Well, the lanes are changing, and the biggest thing with me is the temperature. It's so hot out there that my hand's wet, and it's hard to get a good feel, so I can't make a real good confidence shot. As you can see, anything can happen out there. But it was a good week, and I want to thank Brunswick for getting me here. Um, things didn't go right on TV today, but it's a tough shot today. We'll see what happens this last match. Back to you, Bone Chris. Okay. Mm. Butch coming back after his open frame as Walter Ray did. Uh, Walter Ray was a strike up shooting in the sixth. Dead Eye trying to recover from that open frame in the fifth. Not to be ringing 10, and he does not like it. Both are wired for sound. You hear some uh, PA announcements going on here, giving, keeping the crowd informed. That's Mike Sands, Johnny Campos, and Dave Schroeder. We're down here running the finals. Butch, strike working in the sixth, comes up in the seventh, can increase his lead to 17 pins over Walter Ray Williams Jr. Championship match, the PBA. High hit. Four, six, seven, ten. Well, for Butch Soper, he's just having trouble holding on the bowling ball. And right now, he's going to look at the scoreboard and decide whether she'd really give it a go. Try to get it over here and try to slide the six over into the four, seven, or just take it and try to bounce one up back and make sure he gets an eight count. He's thinking about what he should do. He's looking at the scoreboard. Butch is a statistician. He knows what to do. He's figured it out. Yeah. You know what, Chris? I think he was actually going to go for it, and that ball slipped off his hand yes. again. Yep, he looked immediately to his hand. Normal reaction after it didn't come off the way he wanted it to. Again, looking at that scoreboard, oh, that was pesky open frames. Well, he went from a 21-pin lead just three frames ago to trailing by five, and that's Deadeye mm -hmm. who's got the lead. Walter's first chance to take a double digit lead. Leads by five, strike working eighth frame. Both using the full approach. Seeking his first major. Amazing how many times, as Paige looks on, how many times Walter Ray has been in contention. But, Chris, he's gotten so good that he bowls a lot of times against guys for titles on their lane condition. They like him, and they're not natural for him. So you can discount a lot of the second-place finishes he has. But this is his meet right here. Now this. Now, right now, Walter has to look at the scoreboard. Get the ball over to the left of the four pin, slide it to nine, but do you want to go for it? There he is, there's major, we have large scoreboards here. Here's Walter Ray now looking. Do I want to take nine out or should I go for it? I think in this situation, Chris, I would get nine because if he misses both of them, it's as good as letting Butch have a double. Let's see what Walter does. The pin count, good very point. important. That's what he's doing, just going for nine. Really not wait, taking the chance. What a 
final match for the PBA National Championship. The last three national championships have, have been won by the number one seed. You see, by getting nine out, he maintains a one-pin lead. If he had missed both, Walter Ray would have been trailing by one. So here we go. Which has a strike up. Butch so Sofer at the most extreme time in his career hits the lane that's been somewhat inextricable for him. He had opened the two previous times. He is on the verge right now of winning his first major title. A strike here, and he slams the door on Walter Ray Williams, Jr. If he doesn't strike, Walter can double the win. Here's a man that came off a physical disability after extensive surgery and has bounced back. Strike here, he's a national champion. Look at that. Come on, baby. It would be difficult to tell you, since Bo and I know him so well, what this means to this man, financially and otherwise. You're right, Chris. This is the whole big... This is the whole big kahoon, whatever it is. <laughs> You've got it. He's throwing it down the middle, a good count. That's a winner. And if Walter Ray has to lose to anybody, he doesn't mind losing to a California. The number one player is defeated by Butch Soper, who is the PBA national champion. Butch Sofer, 226, 210, with the champ, Chris Schenkel. What does it mean to you, champion? I tell you, Chris, I have 25 years and finally won a major tournament. Uh, wow, I tell you, it's, 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 I don't know, maybe it's like I was due to beat Walter because he beats me every time on TV and all of a sudden now it's like, uh, I mean, you got to beat him sooner or later. And this was it, the perfect time. The <laughs> California surfer. Another round of applause. Mark Gerbert, executive director of the PBA, has already put the green jacket on, and uh, now Daryl Ducat has uh, two spoils of victory. Congratulations, Butch. Congratulations, Butch. You bowled great all week, and you deserve it. Here's your check for the $30,000, and there's a crystal trophy for you, you and your uh, wife or whatever. Daryl, thanks. Daryl's been Darryl's friends for probably 20 years to come for a guy like this. The big one, $30,000. Thanks. What do you think Don's saying in Lake Havasu? Would you believe she's in the air right now, flying in Detroit Airport in two hours? i got to go pick her up. She won't believe it when I come out like this. Ow. Butch, we, um, we missed you as a statistician, but I'll tell you, Tom Baker did a heck of a fill-in job, you know? Uh-oh. Hey, I want my job back if I don't make the shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A great PVA national champion from California, Lake Havasu, Arizona, Butch Soper. See you next week from Allen Park, Michigan. For Nelson Burton, Jr., I'm Chris Shankle. So long, everyone.